Hello, my name is Robin Olstedt and this is the second video of my submarine project. What we see here is a, a motor driver for a bipolar stepper motor. It's based on the, let's see here, the 3967, A3967 ship. Um, it's essentially just a wrapper for that with all the extra components that it needs. Um, <clears throat> and what makes this ship useful is that it generates all the uh, pulse, it does all the pulse modulation that is required by a stepper motor. Um, and I essentially only have to send a pulse uh, on the step input every time I wanted to perform a step and uh, the ship uh, keeps track of where where in the um, um, where in the cycle it it is. I can also set direction, and it also has a sleep input, uh, which essentially turns off uh, current uh, to the motor, which can be very useful for stepper motors, since they essentially, which are a bit peculiar about them, is they have a uh, constant current draw, uh, which means that even when they're stationary, they have this, they draw the same amount of current as when they move, which means that they tend to get extremely uh, warm, and uh, the ship itself gets really warm as well. Um, and so when I'm not moving, I can essentially turn it off. Uh, and stepper motors have quite high internal resistance even when they're not being supplied with current. So this might not be feasible because um, um, when the submarine will be under a certain amount of pressure, uh, it's not certain if the motor is just passive resistance uh, can, um, or passive friction rather, can uh, withstand the, uh, the friction, uh, uh, sorry, the, um, the pressure um, from a certain depth. But uh, we'll see. Um, I'll start out by putting it to sleep and not moving, and uh, we'll see if it needs uh, power, uh, needs to, um, used to use active, uh, um, yeah, it, it, essentially if it needs to be turned on even when it's off, perhaps I can uh, only have it on when stationary when at a certain depth because that's when it would be required. It would definitely not be necessary um, when it's at the surface or not very far far down. So I've uh, soldered up all these connections. We have uh, input and it also has a voltage regulator with a 5 volts out, which is convenient because that I can use this to drive the Arduino. Um, I'm not sure if I will use an Uno um, in the future, um, but for now it works. Uh, I, like I missed using it to test it out and stuff like that. I might need to upgrade it in the future, but that should be not this shouldn't be too hard okay so uh, I've designed these little pieces which will uh, hold the electronics tray um, mm, let's see it should be this way so one little weird thing I discovered about the Arduino is that the fourth hole, this top one here, is essentially useless because the components are so close to the hole that you can't put a screw through it. And when I designed these pieces, I didn't think of that. And I also thought that these two holes were uh, basically aligned, but one of them is slightly more to the right. I don't know if you can see that. So. This piece has two holes in it, but the top one doesn't fit because they don't align. And rather than just printing a new piece, I'll just keep this one and at least have one screw in it. 
I think it will work anyway. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I'm gonna uh, put this all together. Uh, oh yeah, uh, all these will essentially be sitting along these rods, uh, which will go along the entire length of the submarine. Uh, so yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, that was bloody tedious. <laughs> um, <clears throat> screwing all these screws. So next up, we will mount the Arduino and the EC driver up here. Okay, and now it's all um, mounted. Uh, I'll have to cut these wires to length and uh, hook it all up. Controller all hooked up. So you have a uh, step, direction, and sleep. Uh, this will be 12 volts in, and this is the output for the stepper motor. <clears throat> uh, next up, we'll uh, hook the rest of the system in. Okay. Um, both bulkheads installed. Uh, I've left this a little bit loose uh, because otherwise I'm afraid I won't be able to connect the USB cable for programming. Um, that actually kind of turned out to be a somewhat of a design flaw on my part. Uh, we'll see if there's something I can do about that in the future too. Because when everything else comes together I can't just keep moving this um, every time I need to programming it. We'll see. Uh, another thing um, I discovered, I was just testing out a little bit um, or reading up. There seems to be a problem with uh, using uh, certain pins for uh, as an input pull-up uh, or using the input, uh, the pull-up resistors. Uh, or maybe I just made a mistake when uh, but we'll see. Uh, I switched these around. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, input for the uh, zero, zeroing uh, switch is now in uh, pin five, I believe. Um, and this white here, it goes to sleep in pin four instead. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, let's bring this bad boy to the computer and uh, let's do some programming. Okay, here we go. Um, I've prepared a little bit example uh, program here uh, that essentially we just uh, uh, zero it and then bring it all the way to the uh, maximum position and then I can control it via the serial monitor. It's uh, the very basic, just test the system out. Um, <clears throat> so let's hook it up. maximum position there, which is essentially just a hard-coded point based on the length of the uh, rod or the piston and uh, now I should be able to control it with the serial monitor <coughs> let's see here Oh yeah, <laughs> this makes it restart. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it seems to work reliably. 
makes a horrible sound. Well, that's probably because not everything is stuck in place. Okay. So, let's see if we can pull this backwards. Uh, let's say 20 millimeters. That is 2,000 steps. Seems reasonable. Uh, and I know for the fact that I've set max position for uh, 40 millimeters. So uh, if I do another back 20, uh, it should exactly connect with the zeroing switch. Beautiful. Okay, this seems to work out nice. And the motor is not ridiculously hot like it has been in um, previous tests I've done um, before um, building up all this. So the sleep function seems like a good addition. Okay, so let's, I'll see you in the next video.